Welcome to the Saints Happy Hour Podcast, featuring Dave Cariello, Andrew Juge, Ralph Malbro, and, when he decides to show up, Kevin Hell. We are the perfect blend of Saints sincerity and stupidity. Ingram, my BF, took it to the house and finished it off with a nice little spinorama at the end. It, it was, was a thing of beauty. Your, your pillow talk uh, that evening must have been spectacular. Amazing. Oh yeah, I'm, I put that one on the spank bank. Should we retry this? You can't make Ralph do the ad again. <laughs> and now, here's your host, Ralph Malbro. All right, everybody, welcome to another edition of the Saints Happy Hour podcast. Uh, tonight, it's a special night. It's like the olden times, Kevin. It's me and you. Juge is going to join us late because he is running an errand. When when Andrew says he's running an errand, it just means he has to take an extra 25 minutes to beat some 55-year-old woman Um at tennis, right? That's 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 what that is. Well, you know? I'm glad you completed that sentence there, because for a second it got pretty dark. <laughs> well, the thing is, you know, uh, as we start the Happy Hour podcast, we always start and we kind of tell what people, you know, what's what's going on in our lives, and you know, if, if people are late, why they aren't, why they are, why they aren't joining us. So, so Andrew's got to run a quote unquote errand which means beating a 55-year-old woman at tennis. Dave is probably running both stores, running hectic, crazy back and forth, you know. Um, but we always do that. We always uh, we always tell the people what's going on. Uh, and, of course, Kevin, people know the NFL preseason kicks off in just a little bit of time with the Hall of Fame game in August. And soon we'll have the regular season NFL and college football. And that means it's time to make an account at the best online sports book known to man. That's right. I'm talking about my bookie. They're the people that make the show as great as it can be with the audio and all that by sponsoring us. Sports betting is exploding in popularity. If you want to get on the in, in on the action with a trusted company that's been in business for years, my bookie is the place for you with an easy, no hassle mobile site, 24/7 customer service, and bets on every sports and prop imaginable. My bookie provides a fun, safe betting experience. Maybe you think Drew Brees and the Saints are going to get their revenge in a terrible blown call last NFC Championship, or maybe you think Tom Brady and the Patriots are going to win an unbelievable seventh Super Bowl. Why not make money when your prediction comes true? If you deposit today, my bookie will give you a 50% deposit bonus. That's right. You put 100 in, you get 50 extra. You put in 1,000, that's 500. It's that easy. Football weekends are the best, but they are even more thrilling when the touchdown can win you more money. Go to mybookie.ag and sign up with the promo code HAPPY25 at my bookie. My my bookie, you play, you win, you get paid. Terms and conditions apply. So, Kevin, uh, the Saints, we had our first, <laughs> we had our first bad off-season bump of the summer. You know, the last couple summers it's been bad. You know, two years ago it was Nick Fairley with the heart disease, heart issue, he couldn't play. Tom, Teron Armstead tore his pec and he was out for like six weeks. Um, I'm forgetting enough. Oh, Unger was going to be out for a while. We haven't had any of that. But Onyemata is going to have to sit one game because the NFL has the most bullshit marijuana policy known to man. And Andrew brought this up on the Patreon podcast, which you should all subscribe to, by the way. It's $7 a month. Do it. Uh, you know, Onyemata, they raided his house. And he ain't no drug dealer, right? So they got a – JP got a tip. From somebody that Onyemata was smoking the wacky tobacco or whatever. And that person, I don't advocate violence against them, but they're saints who that nation card gets needs to be fucking revoked. Because that is just bullshit. I would say revoked with borderline prejudice. <laughs> like, I mean, uh... That's, yeah, that's, that's pretty bad, man. Like ban- banned for life, you think, or, or uh, I think for li- I think for life, man. Because if the Saints, the Saints, if the thing is, it's not that big a deal because it's only one year. Like it's only one game, right? And it's just the Texans and their offensive line is terrible. But the thing is, is you know we know people are gonna get hurt in training camp, right? 
it's they're not going to go through unscathed. And, and if they get a couple injuries on defensive line, then suddenly, you know, you're playing some maybe some fucking UDFA or they have to sign some has been like Paul Kruger off the street because you're desperate for a body. You know, and that's the thing, Kevin. It's almost like uh, you, you, you want to start your year at a – you know, you want to start going to training camp and, and have a chance to go into the first week at, at full strength. You don't want people getting injured or arrested or whatever because you know bad things – only bad things can happen during training camp is my attitude. When you're coming off 13-3, and three, like, I don't give a shit about anything in training camp. Like, I mean, it's fun, UDFAs and all that, but, like, all I care about is injuries. And this is a, is a bad way to start. Um, but do you think he should – just should he fight the one-game suspension or should he just suck it up and take it? Uh, take the – look, take the uh... – Take the one game, like it's not like you're gonna win anyway. It's you know, like who's gonna hear it? Goodell, Goodell's gonna hear it, and Goodell's gonna turn you down. You're gonna take the one game anyway. So, just you know, take the one game. If anything, it just further, it kind of just helps sell the point <laughs> that that marijuana policy is draconian as shit. It's so dumb. It's so dumb. And the thing that, the thing that to me is so dumb is if he had, you know, and David Onyemata is like the rest of us, man. He's just, just trying to probably just memory wipe the NFC championship from his brain. He just wants to chill. You know, I don't, smoke dope but i like to i like to get drunk and you know that's legal here's the thing kevin if he had just done it in colorado like this wouldn't even be an issue so like that's why that's why to me the marijuana policy for the nfl is so fucking unfair because if he did it in washington if he did it in colorado i I forget all the states it's legal now but it's it's like five or six right where you can just go into a store and buy buy it and not just medically right i i I forget the ones where it's legal but i know colorado and california so to me that makes the policy soon to be illinois what's that soon to be illinois so so it's just (laughs) that's good for you right Uh, i'm not i i i never i was never into it so i probably will not be partaking but uh i'm simply saying that it's avail it'll be available in illinois next year because because the people like to know our personal lives i'm gonna tell a story right now it's story time with with yeah, uh, go for it. it's good story time with uncle ralph so i graduated from lsu and uh my grandmother who was in north mississippi even though she was from north mississippi and sort of like the the traditional exactly what you would think of a person in Mississippi of the certain of a certain age. Her thing was, hey, it's good to travel. You travel around the world. You, you meet interesting people. You get a better perspective. If you ever want to travel to Europe, I will pay for it. So I was LSU Europe. I was like, hey, I'll go, and my grandma will pay for it. This will be great. So I went to LSU Europe, and in Interlock, or Interlock in Switzerland, it's legal, and it's like an adventure they, they, they market themselves as like the adventure town or whatever, and you can zip line and whitewater raft and all this and get high. And I had never gotten high in my life. I drank a lot at the time, but I didn't, I never gotten high. So you go into a little restaurant and we, and we, we, we did it and we bought it and, um, and we get, we, we smoked it and I smoked it and it didn't do anything for me. And I did the little edible, edible. And I didn't know that, like, if you smoke it and then you take the edible, the edible takes, like, a little time to, like, kick in. Yeah. So I did that. And all these other people that I'm with smoked a lot. So they get they kind of smoked. And they're like, hey, let's go whitewater rafting. So we go whitewater rafting. And Kevin, right about the time the rapids hit, the edible kicked in, and it all just went to fucking Hell, I thought I was going to die. And I was only on, like, rapids for children. Like, this was, like, not the the death-defying rapids. And my crippled ass falls in to the crystal blue Switzerland stream in Interlaken. And for whatever reason... So, wait, so was... somebody had to jump in the water to save your ass? <laughs> yeah, but the thing was, I was so high... That, like, I couldn't, like, I felt like I couldn't move my body. So it took, like, four of them to get me back in the raft. I was, like, a crippled trout. They just had to, like, 
I'm fl I guess I was flopping all around, and I'm high wait, as the wait, fucking Rocky Did you just Rocky describe Mountain. yourself as a crippled trout? Uh, yeah, it was like, you know, like a trout, yeah. like, but like unable to, like a fish, like maybe like a dead fish, kind of like unable to flop, you know, and they had to like get me. Right. <laughs> I was just high. I mean, so that's maybe like my one experience with, with marijuana, because it got me so high, I've, I had done it, I did it after, but the year, I guess it was, because if they, if, if they sell it, right, and you can buy it legally, like they, they can, it's like pure, and they measure it, and it's got all these like regulations, and it's the good stuff, right, so anytime I smoked it after, I was like, well, it didn't get me as high as it got me in, in interlocking, so it's not as good, so I never really was a big fan, but I tripped the balls in the in the Whitewater Rapids, which and, and I don't recommend that, kids. Don't don't get high and then go whitewater rafting, especially if you have cerebral palsy and multiple steel rods and pins in your arms and legs. It's a tip. It might be obvious, but that's a tip. It's news you can use right there. <laughs> so 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 you don't have a story where you just got high as as a fucking high as the Rocky Mountains and, and things got weird? No, I mean, I've, I've never, I've never done that. I've <laughs> never gotten high. Um, I, I, I've, I guess I've joked with people that if it ever became fully legal, that I, I might do it. <laughs> Tom, Tom in the chat like, room, Tom in the chat room said homage to every homage to cocaine two weeks ago when Kevin was on, now we're doing edibles next week, acid and mushrooms. Sure, why not? <laughs> and then a couple weeks after that, black tar heroin. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Like I, I, you know, I guess if I ever traveled to like the Netherlands or whatever, I would prop, I might try it. Um, but I, I guess I, I never did it at a young age. So I sort of just, it just passed me by. Now I got drunk off my ass repeatedly uh, to the point of being very ill. Um, I mean, does anybody, I mean, do you want to hear any one of those stories or should I just skip that? <laughs> I can tell, I can tell you this in that being from New Orleans, I think as most people that listen to this podcast, I think when you grow up in New Orleans, New Orleans, your parents understand that like Bourbon Street, depending on where you live in New Orleans is like five minutes away. So they have to like pick their battles and that sort of thing. And, you know, drinking's just a thing, and and uh, I was of the yeah. age where you only needed the the the, the eight, you only needed the license to say you were eighteen, and you could get in the bar, and it was legal for you to buy it, but it was legal for them to sell it to you, and it was that weird law that Louisiana had until the, the federal government said, "Hey, make it twenty-one, or we're cutting all your highway money off." So I grew up in that late nine, you know, that early nineties era where it was still you could get still get in a bar at eighteen and drink drink till your heart's content. Um, but the one thing about me, Kevin, I grew up, I was petrified of marijuana and cocaine because of what happened to Len Bias when we were kids, right? He did the, did the coke yeah. once and dropped dead. So I have always been petrified of cocaine and still to the point, like, not that, you know, when I was in college, like, especially at Ole Miss, like Ole Miss, I know it's a cliche, but I felt like cocaine was fucking everywhere there. Like, in the one year I was there, I must have turned down doing cocaine, like, about four different times. Like, I, and if people, if you were people at, you went to Ole Miss, my whole family graduated from there, I don't really have too many bad things to say about there, but it was, a, I felt like it was a wash in cocaine, okay? Like, Colonel Rebel, his mustache was white because it was a coke. I must be on the wrong show. <laughs> Kevin's joining us, so we're talking about drugs again, Andrew. I'm such a corrupting influence. I mean, my audio, I'm in my car, so my audio is going to be awful any second, but I, I just Awful any second? It's awful now, buddy. I'll have, a, I'll have a number three with a large Coke and light ice. First time caller, I'll, I'll hang up and listen. <laughs> So, so Andrew, now that you're here, we can talk actual football. And we were discussing Onyemata, and Kevin said that the Saints, whoever turned Onyemata in, needs to be banned for life. So we went through that. But as far as the Saints... Who that card revoked? <laughs> so, so, so they dimed him out. They deserve what they get. So, But as far as like actual football, 
right now on July 1st, who gets Onyemata's snaps versus the Texans? Mario Edwards. Ooh. Hold your breath. <laughs> so, Andrew, have you ever done illicit drugs and got high as shit? I mean, I'm not talking about this on a public podcast. I did. I got high in Switzerland, man. Dude, look, dude, dude is a clean-cut guy. He's going to be running for public office one day, probably. <laughs> probably, And, yes. and some, somebody's going to run a... Uh, a background, a political background check, and they're going to find this goddamn podcast, I, and we're going to sink his campaign. So I, I stay away. I'm not a substance guy. I, I drink, and that's it. So Andrew, this See? Same this quote unquote this quote unquote errand that you had to run, the the 55 uh-huh. year old woman when you defeated her attendance, did she cry or did she take her defeat valiantly tonight? Well, it's funny you should ask. The errand is actually drug related. Um, I had to drop off. My son's uh, antibiotics. Because you have pink, you have pink over. eye, right? Your eye is is leaking fluid, and and you're 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 uh, contagious disease right now, right? I have double pink eye. In both eyes. <laughs> what is? And uh, my my son has scarlet fever. All Jesus. Breaking news: Andrew is a walking, talking possible uh, outbreak of disease and the Black Plague in the Charlottesville area. It's true. <laughs> um, so, so I thought you were doing better. I was talking to you Sunday. You, was just, you, were, you said you were drunk and you were drinking wine and it was fine. You were going to go to work. So you went to work today and you spread the plague further. Yeah, I mean, it's not a party unless everyone in my office has it too, right? <laughs> it's a pink eye. You're just having a pink eye party? <laughs> uh, I love the summer podcast we do. It's just total hardcore football. It's what the people want. It's all the all 27 of the people in the chat room. I, I can't believe is... you guys haven't complained about my audio yet. I uh... mean... This is us. We're talking like, like I'm used to. I'm used to hearing shit from Ralph, and Ralph <laughs> used to hearing shit from me. Like we're an old married couple at this point. It's like, yeah, whatever. We ain't changing. <laughs> somebody said on Twitter. Somebody said. Somebody said on Twitter that we should tell the story since we've been doing the podcast so long. We should explain how everybody got on the podcast, and. Kevin, we started in 2008, 2007, 2007. No, I, it was either 2000. Yeah, it was definitely not 2008. It was either. Oh, six or. Oh, it was seven. either oh, six or oh, seven. I think it might have been oh, seven. What was the because let's see. I think we were. What year did uh, what year did Sean Payton try and do that asinine triple reverse with Reggie Bush and he Tampa, fumbled the ball. Right? It was Tampa. Oh, yeah, seven. It was, Tampa. Was it was, it was okay. Then it was deaf. Then we definitely started it that year then. Yeah. L- little I, known I, fact, Luke McCown was the opposing quarterback. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so we started in 07. It was me and Kevin. And then, you know, we got tired of having like 12 people listen so we we found Canal Street Chronicles, and I think Kevin or I think it was Kevin said, "Hey, why don't you reach out to them, and we can we can we can maybe post on their site." And we talked to Dave, and we said, "Hey, Dave, you jo- fuck it, just join us." And Andrew, I don't like when when did you start coming on? Because I'm bad with you dates. liked my you 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 liked my player great. I did your your play. I missed them. Your play. You were the only person blogging. You weren't the only person doing player grades, but you were only the you were the only person doing player grades and making snide, angry comments in the grades that and they were readable and I understood them and I was like, well, he's angry and bitter and he's giving these hard grades. I get I he's at least funny writing. I'll have him on, but I don't remember what year that was. Was that two thousand and it was post. 2010 and so you came on and you would come on like i think in 2010 you would come on like once a month right or every so often yeah like at first at first i was kind of like a you know 
part-time guest, and then what, the, the more you started, I, I just kept saying yes every time you invited me. <laughs> and, you know, when Kevin started actually doing his wrestling and getting busier, and Dave, you know, started running his empire, I, I just had kids, so I, I had nothing to do. I, they were just asleep, and I was at home. So, you know, basically, I kind of got the job by default because you needed somebody to do it with. Yeah. The two best words in the English language, default. Default, yes. Uh, you're, but, but, and we just started doing it, and, and you know, I, we've had, I mean, th- we've had, we've had stretches. I mean, tonight is an example of terrible, terrible audio with Andrew, but honestly, Andrew's audio tonight, for people that are listening in the stream, and in and, and the YouTube stream, if you think this is bad, I mean, this doesn't even rate in the top 20 of worst audio. I mean, we've had audio where I've sounded like I'm talking out of a hole. The whole podcast sounds like it's talking out of a hole. We've had interviews with famous people, Drew McGarry, before he became as big as he is. We did it out of a wind tunnel. Uh, I mean, so, uh, you know, this this audio isn't as bad, although the people in the, the chat room seem to, seem to think it is. So... Um, you know, there's no there's no other Saints news really going on, but there is one thing I wanted to touch on that I thought was really hysterical. And I know Pelicans fever is sweeping everywhere and um and that sort of thing. But I don't know if either of you guys watched the big ESPN free agency crazy thing last night where they just did five or six hours straight and all the free agency. I watched about ninety minutes of it with a buddy of mine who was huge into the NBA. But here's the thing that was amazing. Three hours in, after Durant and Kyrie made their decisions official, the Knicks released a fucking statement apologizing to their fans about how terrible they are and how bad free agency has gone and they promised to do better and all this. And I can't remember ever a sports team in the middle of the first day of free agency being like, we are sorry, we are terrible, this isn't working out how we thought. And it got me thinking, I couldn't think of a team, but... Andrew, it made me think of another thing, because Knicks fans are just despondent, and I'm a I like Stephen A. Smith. I think he's funny. I like his over the top style. He was despondent today. Like he is, is an admitted Knicks fan, Nick fan, and he was broken hearted, and they're terrible. They're never going to win, and blah blah blah. And it got me to thinking: Has there ever been a time in your Saints fandom where you got so despondent that you either gave up hope? Or you thought about kicking the Saints to the curb and picking a new team, or just giving it up entirely? Um, oh Jesus! Uh, yeah. Good Damn lord! Damn it, Juge! Damn it, Juge! You, you, Juge is, Juge is gone though. Like. So, Kevin, you answer the question. Is there? No, no, no. A- and Andrew, Andrew, nobody can hear you. Nobody Andrew, can hear you. No, no one can hear you. You sound, you sound like a broken speaker, speak and spell in uh, the bottom of a swimming pool. Like it just, fa- it just fades in and out like a tone. So, Kevin, you answer the question. Um. So, are we talking like the team? Uh, like, what are we talking? Like the team's lost, or or just a mood? Like just a mood? Like was there ever a time where you were so either not necessarily that you thought about giving up the Saints, but was there ever a, a time where you were like, my God, they are completely and utterly hopeless, and they're never going to win? Okay, well, so so. So th- that that explains a little bit better because I, I would have just said when they signed Adrian Peterson because I I was done I was I yeah. I checked out. Um, God, when they, huh? Man, I tell you what, that the the closest I think I came. Might have been the Hazlitt, the Hazlitt year where I think they lost like the last three. What did they, what did they lose? Yeah, the last three. They were nine and four. four, and they went nine and seven, and they missed the playoffs. Right. Two thousand and I. Two thousand and three. Yeah, 
I was I was really I I, I don't know. I was fucking apoplectic today? about that. Is today the worst day then, of your life? Yeah. <laughs> I just like and that. Then, I just... And then and then you know follow that up with. Uh, I think the next the following year was uh, was the season ending in Jacksonville. Oh my god. So at that point, I was like, "Yeah, this this fucking fran this franchise, you know, this franchise." I, I looked at it like the franchise has always been snake bit, but I guess I'm just re- really acknowledging the franchise is fucking snake bit, and I'm never going to see them do anything. It's 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 done. It's over. I, I yeah yeah. So I would say those two seasons really did a number on me. Did I, the- I, I, I I can't I can't count the Katrina season. No, the Katrina scene it doesn't count. The, the, the most fr- the Hazlitt was frustrating, but I always felt like God, if they could just if they could just get one good draft, or they could just add a couple of players, like they were so close. Like I wasn't, dis- I was frustrated, but I wasn't. There wasn't a hopelessness. Ditka, a year in, I was completely hopeless because I felt like Ditka didn't understand how the new free agency in the NFL worked and the Saints were always reacting and not you know they players would leave because they wouldn't sign them and they had that meeting where Kevin Mawai the great center from LSU he uh, visited the Saints he wanted to play for the Saints and Ditka instead of like rolling out the red carpet for him was like hey I've got a tea time at 7:10 but you can meet me for I'll meet you for breakfast at like 6:20 like before I tee off and that was just like oh my god they're never fucking winning they just like they don't understand how to do free agency it's like asking a dog to play the trumpet like it just it's never <laughs> it's never going to happen and that like made me just like the last 2 years of Ditka I was just like this is hopeless like he's got he if he doesn't go uh they're never going to win and, and in the final year of Ditka we had decided me and my mom like we we were like if they don't fire him we're we're getting rid of the tickets um wow you know so it was it was it was dark, and it wasn't like it, hey, it wasn't like hey. I was like I'm gonna I'm, I'm not gonna be a Saints fan anymore. N- no, none of that. I was just like there was just a hopelessness to it that I haven't experienced, and and you know that's a good, it's a good thing to me that the 20 years on that there's a whole generation of Saints fans that haven't really experienced that, um, you know, because the last 20 you know you know the last 20 years. The worst they've been is three and thirteen once with Katrina, and like you said, I, we don't even really count it. Um, right. So, um, you know, uh, so we're lucky. But I mean, you know, it's 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 interesting to me that um, that's the thing that sort of really can destroy a franchise. Like if you if you feel hopeless that hopelessness. Um, Tom says there's been multiple times I've felt hopelessness. Archie Brooks, uh, I hate I hated Hazlehead. I like that name for Hazlitt. Um The the quarterback abyss that became that came between uh, A Bear and Brooks. That was a quarterback abyss, but Jim Everett was good for like a second. You know, <laughs> um, I don't know if Andrew's gonna. I don't know if Andrew's gonna um, gonna be back, but he he had talked about how. Uh, it was so frustrating with Hazlitt because you felt like you you felt like they were um you felt like they were so close. Andrew, are you back? I'm back. There you go. So Andrew, you answer the question of when did you feel the most hopeless with the Saints and or frustrated? Not that you would quit being a Saints fan, but when was the darkest time? For you as a Saints fan, and we're and we're discussing this because of what the Knicks did when they apologized in free agency yeah. uh, last night. What, what was Kevin's answer? Kevin's answer um, was. Go ahead, was, Ralph. Uh, Hazlitt. Oh, just in general. Well, no, yeah. no, no. I, I said, I said the two seasons yeah. like, the, the, where, where they lost the last three and they only had to win the one, and then they followed yeah. that up by by concluding the the season with the fucking Jacksonville game. And what what about you, Ralph? What was your pick? Ditka. 
I knew yeah. I was like the last two years of Ditka. I just so so here's the thing, and, and like three and thirteen is is awful. And if you if you're a fan of the Saints post two thousand six, and you've really only been around for Sean Payton, then you've never experienced worse than seven and nine. And I know like the deep dark hole of seven and nine many years in a row is feels awful, but three and thirteen is awful. I mean, just awful. Um, and in my life, the Saints have been three and thirteen that that I remember. They've been three and thirteen three times. Uh, but the thing about all three of those is that it wasn't that bad because each each of those years the coach got fired. So three and thirteen more is last year. Three and thirteen Dick is last year, and then three and thirteen Hazlitt's last year, which was the Katrina year. So. You know, there was always the hope of the next season. So I guess my answer would be the same as Kevin's. Um, the most frustrating was really that Aaron Brooks fiasco where his arm was injured and Hazlitt just refused to put Jake DeLome in. Oh, that's Jake a good De- one. That's Jake DeLome good... goes on to, to quarterback the Panthers to the Super Bowl the following year, you know, after he <laughs> leaves. And that, that was like salt on the wound, man. I was so fucking pissed because I just remember like, we let that dude go, and he's in the f- fucking Super Bowl now. Are you kidding me? And I, also, he I, was in the Super yes. Bowl, and he lit New England up in the second half. Like he was he on the fucking fire in that Super yes. Bowl. Yeah, and and like I, I just like I wanted Hazlitt fired. I, I every game that Delome would win in Carolina <laughs> just like solidified the fact that I was like Hazlitt needs to be fired now. And I kind of got to a point where I was like, until Aaron Brooks and Hazlitt are out of my life, I don't know if I can keep doing this. Yeah. Um, and I, are, the thing is, I'm not, I'm, told, not, I'm not an Aaron Brooks hater. Like, I, I wasn't like, you know, one of the, these fans that just like believed that he was the worst quarterback ever or anything like that. I was an Aaron Brooks believer. But like. Hmm. That season, it was just so clear that he was hurt and that he couldn't play. Yeah. I was – that period, I too, was pretty despondent in that – but the reason I was is I was working at WWL the last two two years of Hazlitt before Katrina. And just being at the Saints facility every day – and seeing them in action, and then having the negativity, and, and although I loved him, Buddy D, like he was just he was just like, they're all fucked. They're never winning, and like having to deal with that every day, like it was pretty, it was pretty, it, it beat me down pretty good. And I have to say, being separated from it is better. Like because if if your team is struggling and you have to go into the locker room, you see all their warts and stuff, and then you realize that like oh my god, they re- they really they really are sending a person in here to to monitor Buddy D before we go live to see what he's gonna say, and they care way too much about that instead of you know, and that's just a really bad sign that they uh, that they're not well run. Um, so that was pretty deep, but I, I still say it wasn't as deep as uh, it wasn't as bad as Ditka. Um, so uh, we've got some some pretty good questions uh, from from listeners in the chat room and, and online. Uh, Monadula asks, "Where's my koozie?" Monadula, I sent it to you. They sent it back. I, I didn't do the postage right, or you have to like declare what you put in it to the post office, and I didn't do that so we'll try to get it to you but it, it got sent back to me i don't know if i don't know if we're ever going to get the koozie to the netherlands wait but... so does that mean you're going to try it again i'm going to try have it you, again or have you given up yeah the thing is with that is you you have to go to the po- i have to go to the post office and say like i'm this envelope to the netherlands it has a koozie in it where like anything in the united states i can just put them in the mailbox right for like all the foreign ones you have to like take it down there and like stand in line for hours on end and uh, i'm don't necessarily have the time and sometimes they let them through like sometimes they just i've mailed them out to foreign countries and and the post office they're not quite as diligent and it just goes through and people get them um but monadula asks kevin uh which saints players would you cast in the uh cast as the Avengers okay um so I was taking notes on this 
in the, you know, 10 minutes before uh, before we were recording. I took this yeah, very seriously. sound effects, but that's all I got. Right. Well. Or the, I got uh, the hype yeah. train if you want the hype train. What was that? Ooh, that sounds nice. Well, wait. <laughs> I mean, well, I'm going to cast Anzalone as the... Oh, shit. What the hell did I drop? I bumped into something. Did he just say Anzalone? You got you got something for that. Yeah, I got Anzalone is Thor. So yeah. So we got that. Um, I was debating. I was debating Drew Brees as either Captain America or Iron Man. I went with Brees as Captain America. Okay. Uh, and that's that's only because that's only because I've got uh, Teddy Bridgewater. As the uh, the Falcon, I feel like I'm taking crazy no, pills. that's a little ridiculous. But continue. Well, you know, well Bridgewater's supposed to be the successor, so okay. Um, then where the hell did my notepad go? <laughs> oh, there. Um, well, who did I have as Iron? Oh yeah, so I had Mike Thomas as Iron Man. Uh, I had Cam Jordan. As, oh shit, I had Cam Jordan as the Hulk. I had Thomas Morstead as Doctor Strange. I had uh, Kamara as Spider-Man. And I had Vision as Marshawn Lattimore. Hawkeye as Will Lutz. And Ant-Man as Ted Ginn. I like Uh, that. I don't know why I find the Ant-Man, Ted Ginn is the Ant-Man funny, but I do. Uh, but you brought up I that, don't that body. I don't have anybody for Winter Soldier, and I don't have anybody for Black Panther. It, that's a good. You brought up Kamara. I wanted to say, did either of you see the the forty yards of goal? Wait, right? wait. I, I don't watch. I don't watch that stuff at all. But it described to me Black Panther. Uh, Black Panther is essentially like imagine Batman, uh-huh. but but. But like, also the king of a country. Right. Like, imagine if Batman was the king of a country. Oh, well, that's got to be David Onyemanda. Well, okay. Yeah. Well, then there we go, then. So, yeah, David Onyemanda, good... Black Panther. So, right. so, that was good. Here, Here's the thing. Did either of you see the 40 yards of gold? Because I feel like uh, Ted Ginn spawned the idea and then didn't show... And I watched the highlight of Kamara. I forget who he was running against. I feel like Kamara. He was running against uh, the Jets receiver. Um, I feel Robbie. like he shut it down like 10 yards into it. Really? Like, I didn't feel like Kamara ran, gave it his all, which is fine. We don't want Kamara blowing a hammy in the 40 yards gold. Like, it was fine. But I feel like I feel like Kamara kind of shut it down like after 10 yards. I'm I'm finally catching up on the uh, comments, and I see Saints Recline said I sounded like a 1986 Nintendo character talking. <laughs> he kind of did. <laughs> um. So yeah, I was ba- double I was, dribble. <laughs> man, double dribble was the shiznit. NBA jams when you put in the you put in the secret code and you could be Bill and Hillary and just dunk on people um here's a great question we're all gonna answer this this is from eric how much would someone have to pay you to wear a junior galette jersey for six months straight your instinct is to say no amount of money is worth it but would you really turn down a million bucks uh if somebody was get if somebody wanted to give me a million dollars i would absolutely do it would you wear a falcons jersey though for a million dollars no yeah <laughs> well, wait, 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 wait. How long do I have to like? What What are the circumstances on it? Let's 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 really crunch some numbers here. What what, what what's the what's the? Let, let's just it? say let's just say you got to put it on for thirty seconds. Oh, for, and you got to take a picture that goes viral. And I'm getting a million dollars. Yes. <sighs> Can I have the million dollars in the picture that goes viral? No. Yeah. No. Wait, what? <laughs> Wait, no, you, don't, you, don't, you don't get it in the picture. Can I mention I get- the million dollars in the Instagram? The, the in a subsequent tweet? Yeah. Uh, no, you, you, you have to stay private. 
about the money. Right. You're not allowed to. Okay, you're not no. allowed to admit you're getting the money. That's correct. No, man. Okay. Oh boy, then that's. <sighs> I mean, I get. See, I'm with you guys. Like, there is. Uh, I'm not putting on a Falcons jersey. Like, uh, I there. I, I'm a man. Of, I'm a principled man. Like, if, if we don't have beliefs, then you know what are we? It's what, rules are what separates us from the animals. I and, the only the only way I would put a Falcon jersey on is if I had to do it to save a loved one's life. Other than yeah, that, even, not, even then, dude. Dave, well, it if it was like, like a like distant Dave. relative too, or like Dave, I I wouldn't put it on. <laughs> but but like my wife or my kid or my mom, my wife, my brother maybe, my sister, eh. Um, but a Junior Galette jersey, I would put on a Junior Galette jersey and wear a Junior Galette jersey for six months. I would do that for a thousand dollar pop belly gift card, man. It's like a like a Junior Galette jersey, like that, that that wouldn't even phase me. Like, oh yeah, I mean, and you could you it would be funny. Like it, it it's yeah he did some non funny stuff, beating some beating a woman with a belt, but not funny stuff. But I don't think like I don't know I don't know that was kind of funny though. What, what about this? I mean, not not the woman actually getting hit with the belt, obviously, but just but Dave making the collage. The memes that that created, the, the, those pictures out there of him with a belt on the beach, like I don't know. <laughs> here's, I a, humor here's a question: Would you wear a Darren Sharper jersey for a million dollars? Oh, oh. a million? No way! Oh. Not a million dollars. What about Adrian Peterson? Kevin? Oh, that was nope. my next one. Nope. <laughs> I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I'm wearing an Adrian Peterson jersey. No questions dollars. asked. Million oh dollars. yeah. Million dollars. Oh, what's oh. your price tag? Oh, you mean how low would I go? Yeah. What's your price tag? Yeah, hundred bucks. Oh, for oh. Christ's sake, Juge. Jesus, Juge. He said he was sorry. I feel like I'm taking crazy. Pills. You gotta do at least the four figures, man. Come on. Have a yeah, little wear, dignity. An Adrian Peterson jersey? If you paid me a hundred bucks to put on an Adrian Peterson jersey, I just put it on and I just take it off. Yeah, hundred bucks, easy. Even though the picture Not that would go big viral. Of a deal. It's just a shirt. Even if the picture went viral. All right, two hundred bucks. <laughs> um. Sharper, I'd have to go higher. Sharper, uh, I don't know. The thing about Sharper is, I'd have to take it. I'd have to shower for a week after wearing that jersey. The thing about the the thing about Sharper is, if you, I think the reaction to wearing a Sharper jersey on a picture of that on social media that might be a worse. You might get a worse response from Saints fans than if you wore a Falcons jersey. I can because, believe that. Because, I can believe because, that. Because Darren Sharper, he has horrible, horrible things, and they they think you were making some sort of statement of support for him. Where if, if Falcons jersey, they'd just be like, "What are you doing? That's fucking ridiculous!" Like people, I think people would be angry with you about the Sharper jersey, and I can say that because I made an innocuous comment about Gail Benson. And the NBA talking about owner and changing the word to governor, and I just thought it was a no nothing tweet. And for three fucking days, my mentions were a dumpster fire. And I think putting a sharper jersey on for thirty seconds and it going on Instagram or Twitter would that would, it would be that times a thousand. You think Saints fans would be? I think I think real I think, mess up about it. I think Saints fan, other fans. I mean, would, it's kind of complicated for us, right? Not really. I mean, not really. really because that's no, the not thing. Really. It's but the dude it's, helped us win a Super Bowl. I'm just saying, like, it, it's just the jersey, man. Like, it's obviously no one supports what he did. Yeah, but right, people on right, the right, but you can't you can't explain why you're having to wear the jersey. Well, that's so the rule. I, you do it on yeah, this. Yeah, but here's the thing: like, I don't own a sharper jersey, but they're out there. Because that dude was a star, and he was fun. Like, you know there's, like, hundreds of Darren Sharper jerseys somewhere in New Orleans, either hanging in closets 
or in some dumpster somewhere. They're, they're out there. They're in New Orleans. And the, the, the thing that's fascinating to me is that they're not seeing the light of day, but you know they still exist. Yeah. I mean, do you think they've all been thrown in the trash? No. I, 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 I think some people have either put them in. I think some people, I think there's a very small percentage that probably burned them or destroyed how much you them. Think, how much you think, how much you think a Darren Sharper jersey goes for on the resale site Poshmark? Oh. 12 bucks. Andrew, you want to put in a bid? And I don't know. $24. But it's brand new. Never worn. I looked it up. <laughs> Jew Cruel OK says they are at every thrift store on the West Bank. That's probably not a joke. That's, that's probably true. <laughs> Juke, if they're less than $8, buy us one. DM me. I'll give you a dress. You can ship it to us and we'll burn it in a viral video that may or may not burn down my house. All right. I am on uh, eBay right now, and there is a Saints Darren Sharper Reebok jersey from the Super Bowl. It, it says it's used. on It's on sale right now for $65. Six, uh, $65. Is, some, is someone buy, does someone buy that? Maybe they got it. Maybe, maybe they like, like when the when they like subpoenaed his house or something. Like it went into evidence and somebody swiped it from the evidence room, thinking they could sell it. Man, I'm glad. This is the kind of topics that make our show special. Like people. Yeah, Tom Stewart for- makes a good point. You can buy a lot of principles for a million dollars. <laughs> I mean, with a million dollars, I be I can become a much better human being. I can, I for a million dollars, I can live my dream of doing this show every day and nothing else, and just doing Saints podcast every day and playing on Twitter nonstop, which really would help a lot of people. I mean, Kevin, if you got a million dollars for putting on that Adrian Peterson jersey, right? And you could give half of it to an orphanage. And then wouldn't it be a good thing that you wore the jersey? And Kevin is gone, I think. Kevin, are you there? No, I think Kevin is I think Kevin He's is gone. gone. I think, uh, I think Kev, Kevin, so Kevin would have given half. He would have given half to his charity, the Kevin Held Wrestling and Beer for for Wayward Children Foundation. So, what's the worst jersey that you could wear, Ralph? Saints player. I mean, it's got to be sharp. Like, who's worse than sharper? Like, I mean, other other people would other people that you would wear. Like, if you wore Jonathan Sullivan. Or you wore Brandon Browner. Like, when we, we had this just discussion before, like, the worst St. Jersey. But, like, those wouldn't elicit, wouldn't elicit any reaction on social. Like if, like, if I go to Marshalls or whatever in New Orleans and dig through and find a whatever, you know, a Brandon Browner jersey or a Bro jersey or whatever, think of the or, or any of the linebackers the Saints had that were terrible. Right, and I wear it on social media. I'm like, ha ha, look at this. Like that's that's no reaction at all. Sharper, Adrian Peterson, Albert Connell. That might elicit a little reaction. That's that's a long time ago though. Oh yeah, Albert Connell. That's a good one. Uh, I'm trying to think. Uh, yeah. That, I mean, that's it. That the thing is, I think, I think. I think I think there's no reaction like the sharper jersey. I'm almost tempted to do it and just to, just to prove just to prove the point that I'm right. But people would get so mad, and I read things about now that like sports fans they get mad at people and they like 
when they, when people when people write things they don't like about their team and they will search your old tweets and try to make you say, "Oh, you said this 7 years ago, your employer needs to fire you." So I wouldn't want to wear the sh- sharper jersey that might cause me more uh more stress than I need. Um yeah, I don't like to think about sharper too much because like the more I think about his victims and what he did, like it taints 2009. It, it starts, it just, yeah, it starts to sour the Super Bowl a little bit. For it me. does, Th- and I say I say this all the time. Thank God he didn't make any big plays in the Super Bowl. Thank yeah. God. Yeah. Thank like, God it was Tracy Porter. Yeah. Like yeah. it just and and people say, oh, it wouldn't matter. Dude, it would matter if you're watching NFL. If you're watching the NFL channel at two in the morning, Super Bowl week, and that comes on, and it's Darren Sharper streaking Ugh. and not Tracy Porter. Oh my God, I don't even. It, just, it gives me, it gives me an aneurysm. I'd still, I'd still take the Lombardi Trophy though. Not I'd still take it, but it wouldn't be. It would, it would be like, it'd be like ten. It, it'd be like ten. Per, the nostalgia wouldn't be a perfect hundred percent, and wouldn't make me as emotional as it still does. It, I would only get like ninety percent of the way there that I do um so uh before we get out of here I want to remind you guys go to SeatGeek they have the best ticket app out there uh download the app they scour the whole secondary market for any concerts football games sporting events events that you want to see green light means it's a good deal uh Yellow light means it's an okay deal red light means it's a bad deal use the code ACAA right now get 20 dollars off your first purchase using the app that's a free that's a beer that's a hot dog use the code ACAA it's twenty dollars off on SeatGeek do it now download the app uh, SeatGeek life's an event we have the tickets um, so that about wraps it up for uh, today thanks for thanks for Kevin for uh, for filling in as Andrew had to go <laughs> a medical run because he's got the plague uh, so thanks for Kevin for filling in Dave was uh, MIA tonight but he's busy he's trying to run he's trying to double his t-shirt empire so we know um, we know how that is uh, so the last thing I wanted to tell people is, Patrons, you need to sign up for seven dollars. You get a show every day, but we want to let the patrons know uh, it's Fourth of July week, so you're not. We're gonna give you a daily show on Wednesday, on Wednesday, but Thursday and Friday we're taking off because me and Andrew are gonna be drunk poolside somewhere, uh, and we'll be back with you next Monday. Uh, so just so you know, so like if you're expecting shows on the holiday, we too are taking the time off, but we'll be back Monday. And Andrew. We got we got really fun stuff planned for the next two weeks before training camp, right? For for the podcast. Oh yeah. Yeah, we yeah. got we have we have fan we have Saints Appreciation Week where me and Andrew are gonna pick random Saints players, some great, some not so great, that we loved, and we're gonna do a whole podcast on them. So nominate players that you loved that are like random Saints players. They could be good or bad or whatever and nominate them. And we may do uh, a Saints appreciation podcast on them in the next two weeks. Um, but that's it. So for, um, it's for Kevin and for Dave and for Andrew uh, and to everybody in the chat room. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for joining us. It's joining in the ridiculousness, uh, listening to our drug talk, our Jersey talk, and a little bit of Saints talk about on Yamana being suspended. Uh, so we appreciate you guys as always. So, so until next week, the bar is closed.